Hi, this is Jonathan with Nimblehost, and I just thought I would take a few minutes and share with you some SEO basics for Rapweaver users. Now, I decided to make this video because we've been getting some questions with regards to how some of our products will work in regards to search engine optimization, uh, more specifically if they'll work fine. So let me go ahead and uh, answer those questions by sharing some SEO basics and how to use these uh, three techniques for getting the ranking you want when you're creating a Rapweaver site. So the first thing you need to focus on is what I call three different techniques. And the first, most importantly, is your content. And once you have that squared away, then you can work on optimizing your website. And then there are some third-party tools you can use to uh, fine-tune the results. So of course, content is king. You may have heard this before. Um, but if you think about sites that are just really, really popular, things like uh, Daring Fireball, if you're an Apple fan, and things of that nature, those sites aren't necessarily optimized to get really high search results, um, but they still get a tremendous amount of traffic. And the reason why is because they've got great content. Now the key with content is that it must be relevant to your visitors. And it must also be natural. You don't want to stuff lots of different keywords onto the page, hoping that Google will find and rank them. And another thing you want to keep in mind is that your content must consistently be fresh. Now, this is fine and well and good for people who are bloggers and write a lot of posts, or if you're a freelancer and you're making updates to your website on a regular basis. But sometimes people will say, well, I've got a business website and we don't need to update our website. But there are ways that you can keep your content consistent and fresh, even if you are a business owner, by creating a blog page and posting on different topics on a regular basis. You can upload videos of customer uh, testimonials or just tutorials, things that you'll help your customers. So there's always a way to keep your content fresh and relevant to the current situation uh, for your website visitors. The great thing about content is that you'll get repeat visitors, people who keep coming back to your website time and again. And of course, when you have this great content, then people will want to link to it. And so when people from other areas on the web link to your website, this gives you what's called backlinks. And these backlinks are very important with regards to how your website will rank in different search engines. So if you've got a lot of great high quality backlinks to your website, that will tend to push your ranking up quite a bit. And the second technique I wanted to go over is actually optimizing your website. Once you have the content down, and the content is by far the most important thing, then you can start working on things on your website to kind of fine tune and kind of bump things up a little bit. So the first thing that you can do with your Rapweaver website is make sure that you've got unique, relevant page title for each page. And this is something that's often overlooked by a lot of Rapweaver users. And they'll just rename a page in the Rapweaver website. And if they don't enter in something specifically for the page title, Rapweaver will use the page name as the page title, and which oftentimes is not necessarily a good thing. Something else you want to do is to add a description meta tag to each page as search engines will typically display this meta tag um, in their search results for your website. So if you don't have anything listed there then you don't really know what's going to be displayed in your search engine listing. And of course you want to make sure that you use uh, relevant keywords in the heading tags for your page content. And I'll go over all this in an example with our own website so you can see how we, you can put this into work in your own site. Of course, there are other things you can do to optimize your website. The first is you can add natural, relevant keywords to the links that you create. So instead of just creating a link that says here, click here, or go here, you can add some keywords to that link that give their your visitors a sense of where it is that they're going and that it's actually somewhere where they want to go as opposed to just being a generic term. 
We also recommend cruffless links for your websites. Um, we've talked about this in depth over the past uh, couple of years and recently, and we've got a lot of blog posts and videos on our website in regards to cruffless links and how awesome that they are. We, we really, really like them, and they'll make a big difference. And of course, you want to make sure that you have a site map file for your website. So once you've done all that, there are some other things that you can do to, again, go even further to get extra credit, so to speak, and to make sure that you've got things uh, in a great condition. And the first thing that we recommend is that you go and log into the Google Webmaster site. And what you can do after you've registered is you can submit your site and your site map file to Google. And what that will do is that will essentially schedule your website to be crawled by Google's WebBot. And once it does that, and it may take a few days, um, they'll typically list any errors found on your website, things like a missing page or a dead link or things like that. And so we really do highly recommend that you go ahead and fix any errors that they do find. And of course, follow the suggestions they have for optimization. And this final little tidbit is something that a lot of people aren't really aware of at this point. It's something called page speed or how fast that your page loads. And Google actually has a tool, a free tool, that you can use to measure how quickly your website loads. And it may be common sense, but if your site is loading slowly, then of course your visitors are going to go somewhere else. They're not going to wait a long time for your site to load, and they'll just go somewhere else and you might never ever see them again. So those are the three basic techniques um, that I wanted to go over with you. And so I'll take another couple of minutes here and actually show you how we you've integrated those into our own website. So I'm going to back out of the presentation here and then switch over to um, Rapid Weaver uh, to show you an example of how to add a page title to your page. So as you, as you can see here, we've got just a single page. It's named Home. And you'll notice that the page title here is just Home. And we actually want it to be more descriptive than that. We want to change the browser title to something more descriptive. So in our case, for example, if you were to visit the Nimblehost website, um, you'll see here this is our support site, and you'll see that the browser title listed here is Nimblehost Support Documentation and Online Manual. So the reason why this is displayed here like this is because we have entered in a browser title here in Rapid Weaver. And if you don't do this, for example, like if we were to preview this page um, just as it is, Home, in Safari, let's go ahead and do that so you can take a, a peek at what that would look like. You'll notice that the browser title here is just home. Um, it's not descriptive, it doesn't help your visitors understand um, what the page is about at all. But if we go back and we add in something like um, growing big tomatoes, you know, if that's something that you want to be doing with your website, is a website devoted to growing big tomatoes. And we go ahead and do that and we preview this in Safari, then you'll notice that the browser title now is Growing Big Tomatoes. It's the, in the, the page tab itself. And this is a big clue to search engines when they're looking at your website, um, what the page is actually about. So you want to make sure that it's descriptive, that it's relevant. Um, if possible, you want to try and integrate a keyword in there, but it's more important that it be relevant and natural for your site visitors. So you'll notice here, um, also, one of the things we mentioned was you want to uh, try and insert your keywords into the site title and slogan, the, the heading tags for your content. Um, but before I go, go and do that, let me just show you some of the terms that were ranked for and that were on the first page of Google. So, for example, um, I punched in the term Rapid Weaver Themes, and you'll see that Nimblehost is listed here on the first page. If I do something similar for say Rapid Weaver plugins, then you'll see again Nimblehost is listed here on the first page of Google. Uh, something else like Rapid Weaver CMS, you actually notice that we are listed not only on the first page but the very first listing. Um, and I just mentioned this so that you can see that the techniques that we've put into place are effective. They've gotten us on the first page of Google so that people can find our website when they're looking for solutions to their problems. And so one of the reasons why we've, we've done this, for example, you'll notice here that we, we've got a description here. Um, we've got the 
obviously keywords for the terms that we're looking for actually in the, the browser title if we were to jump to that page you'll notice that the Armadillo CMS Ref Weaver by Nimblehost that's the browser title that's what I was re referring to you previously about in regards to adding a browser title page so and again you'll see that these we, we have our headings here and we're talking about content creation and Rapid Weaver and so that's why we've included some keywords into the heading tags. So the next things I wanted to just go over with you very quickly is for example the I mentioned the Google Webmaster Tools which you can uh, visit by going here on the Google Webmasters site. You can sign into Webmaster Tools, submit your site here Make sure you upload a sitemap and then Google will go through and, and uh, search, crawl your sites and list any errors that it finds and you want to make sure to go ahead and fix those. And the big thing that I also think you'll want to take a look at is page speed. And what, it, for example, what I've done here is I've loaded the Nimblehost store website. You'll notice that we get a page speed score of 93 of 100, which is very, very good. Um, there are some things that we could do to up this up a little bit. Um, and you'll notice that there is an L here. This means it's a low priority. M means medium priority. You'll notice that we don't have any high priority items to look through. And some of these things are things that you can't necessarily do in RapidWeaver. You have to do it on your hosting account. But this is a good way to get a sense for how your website is loading, how fast it is. And of course you want this score to be as high as possible because then that means your website is going to load faster and your customers are going to be, or you're just your website visitors are going to be able to see your content your website right away which is going to help them and when they're browsing their website and they're not going to go somewhere else um, like I mentioned before if your website loads very very slowly then they're not going to wait they're going to go somewhere else and you might never see them again so that is just a quick uh, overview of three very basic techniques you can use in Rapid Weaver when you are uh, creating your website and wanting to make sure that it's uh, is got good rankings uh, in the search engines. So if you have any questions or concerns, please do uh, leave a comment in the comments below or contact us with any questions. I hope this helps and happy weaving. Mm -hmm.